What is going on guys, Lawson here. Gonna do something a little different today because it's a short video of an unboxing because I just got a new shipment of lures in the mail and so I kinda wanna go through them and show you guys these different things and tell you what I'm gonna use them for and you guys can give me your opinions of what you would use them for. Just kinda show you some cool stuff. Let's get into it. Everything I ordered in here is Storm Baits, and I'm not affiliated or anything with Storm Baits. I just want to try a new brand, and so I ordered like six different things from them. And I'm not sure if you're aware or not, Storm is actually just a subdivision of Rapala. Storm is what they call their soft plastic lure series, but they're made by Rapala. So, just want to try some different stuff, and Storm's very cheap, which is nice, or inexpensive, I should say. I don't know, I've heard different things where people say their stuff kind of falls apart but you know I ordered six packs of lures that all came in packs of three and it cost me around thirty one dollars where you know you guys watched the video the other day I flung off a twenty dollar Savage Gear swim bait after four casts so you know, it's hard to say what's worth it and what's not if these will work maybe they'll be worth it if they don't Maybe there's some real merit in buying higher quality, more expensive lures. But I'm going to kind of go over these and show you what I got. And, you know, I want to get your guys' opinion. What do you think about each lure? What you think will work best for snook or work well for bass, tarpon, whatever you guys think. I want to hear about it. Starting off, got a wild eye shrimp right there. And this is the clearest color I could find. You see it has kind of an orange belly in it. And I think that's more supposed to represent when shrimps are carrying eggs. They kind of get that orangeness in them. So I think this is kind of cool. Nothing super special about these. Just shrimps are shrimp to me. Just different brands. Find out what you like. But this is just going to be thrown around docks, mangroves, you know, basic shrimp and stuff. Nothing too fascinating about there. They're three inches and they are quarter ounce. Second, these are pretty cool. Wild Eye Live Minnows, or what these are called. And these are one inch minnows, and I actually bought these to throw for those tarpon way back in the river, or even freshwater tarpon. And also, I've had people ask me, you know, is freshwater tarpon the same thing? It is the same thing. It's just a tarpon that has swam up into a creek that's turned into fresh water, or tarpon that swam up into a pond and the pond got dammed and landlocked and now there's tarpon in there. People call them freshwater tarpon, but they're just still tarpon. But I think these will definitely get hit. The question will be whether the hooks will stand up or not. The hooks are very, very small. Now the treble hook on the bottom, I may end up taking off. I'm not sure, but the top J hook up top is very, very small. This is really meant for like crappie and bluegill and stuff like that, but if the hooks will hold up, I think this would be great lures. That's just really what the question is going to be, is whether I can cast these and the hooks will hold up. They're only 1 16th of an ounce. So it's going to be hard to cast. Definitely going to have to use a micro light setup to throw these, but I think they'll work. It's just literally, like I said a hundred times, whether the hooks hold up or not. Third, something a little new here. These are sand eels right here. And a black and chartreuse, which is just one of my favorite color patterns. These are very interesting looking and I think will work really well around bridges is mainly where I'll probably use these. Maybe sometimes around docks, but I think bridges are where these are going to shine for sure. Kind of a dark profile style bait. I don't know. I've never used any sand eel baits. If you guys have any opinions on them, let me know if you have any success using kind of sand eel style baits. These are 6 inches and 7 eighths of an ounce. They're cool. It's a really solid hook up top and I'm sure these will have a really great swimming action with a big boot tail like that and a long, long body. Those great action, but you know, does that mean the fish like them? I don't know. Fourth, right here, are swimming mullet. Now these are pretty cool looking. This is a mullet pattern swim bait. It's in five inches and I believe it is five eighths of an ounce. These will be great for everywhere really it's gonna be bridges 
letting them just swim really slow along a bridge or throwing them parallel to a dock and reeling them across all the pilings and waiting for that snook to come out and eat it along the pilings. Reeling them quickly across a shallow flat or something like that, just covering ground. These will be great search baits. Decent sight casting baits. When I'm sight casting on a snook, a lot of times I like to use something that's kind of light so it doesn't make a lot of noise when it splashes, but this should be all right. I've heard people complain, you know, the reason spool techs are so popular is because they have the deployable leader and so it's really hard for a snook to throw the snook to throw the hook. But with these I've heard people complain that it's very easy for them to throw because there's so much weight loaded into the head and that once the snook shakes it you can really use that weight from the lure to throw it out of their mouth. But we'll see if this works. I think they should do well. I just hope they hold up and they don't get thrown. Let me know if you guys have any experience throwing these, if you've had a lot of problems with them. Let a guy know. Finally, last bait in here is a suspended wild eye shad swim bait. I've kind of already opened these. You can see the package kind of askew. These should be cool, you know. These are going to be a great swim bait. They can cover a decent amount of ground because they have some weight to them. They're not super heavy. They're 3 eighths of an ounce and 4 inches long. So the idea behind these, my or these, if you watch my videos, you'll see I throw a lot of mirror beans and mirror lures. The suspended touch weights because they work so well around docks and bridges, like around structure and even sight casting because you can really, you have options of how you want to present it. Where with a heavy swim bait like this, you either got to drag it on the bottom or reel it at a decent speed in the middle of the water column to get it moving. Where this, you know, I could reel it pretty fast. It's got that, that boot tail behind it and I can reel it very quickly and it's gonna cover a lot of ground or I can slow it down and it's gonna slowly suspend and I can twitch it and pull it from side to side. And I think this is gonna be a really great bait. I'm not sure how I feel about the treble hooks up top or the treble hooks down below and the J hook up top. I think it should be fine. I think this is going to be a great bait for covering a lot of ground. Alright, so that is all the lures right there. Let me know what you guys think about these, what your opinions are, maybe on storm baits themselves or even each individual lure where, you know, swim baits, shrimps, little tiny, tiny swim baits twitch baits let me know what you guys think is going to work or what your experience with using these are you know i want to know and let me know if you guys have any lures that you would like to see me try i know i get a lot of requests to use spool techs spool techs are they're hard for me you know i've bought three or four over the past probably two months and it costs you know i bought three spool techs and it cost me sixty dollars you know so it's hard for me to get myself to buy those a lot of times and Fishing from the boat, they're not extremely effective. They are very, very great if you're fishing from bridges, piers, from land because they're heavy. You can cover a ton of ground with them. And that's what they're designed for. They're designed for fishing from piers. And not to say that I know they'll work from a boat. I just haven't had a lot of luck with them, so it's hard for me to convince myself to use a bait that I'm not doing well with. But I know eventually I'll throw a spool tech one day and hook a giant snook and be like, oh, these are the greatest lures ever. Haven't happened yet for me, but give me some advice on different lures that you think I should try, or opinions that you have on these different baits, or opinions on whatever bait you want. I want to hear from you guys, you know, because a lot of you have great knowledge and different opinions. It's really cool for me to hear what you guys have to say. So, yeah, give me your opinion on what baits you think I should use, and I'll try to make a video using those baits or. Even just try to go out and use them and see how they work, whether it's snook, tarpon, bass, reds, whatever fish, jack, doesn't matter. Let me know what some of your guys' favorite lures are, and I'm going to try to use those because that's been one of my hardest problems, I think, fishing and doing all this, is that I get into a mindset of, you know, I have a few lures that I really like to use, and that's all I'll ever use, which is good. You know, you have your kind of set players that you like to break out and for me it's definitely heat and spook for top waters mirrodine twitch bait for like anything and doa bait buster for bridges and stuff like that 
DOA cows, DOA shrimps. You know, I get really in a closed mindset of what I like to use, a voodoo mullet, but I'm trying to expand my horizons and open myself up to new lures because I know there's better and great stuff out there. So I want to hear from you guys what you think are some great lures. Let me know. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate you guys. Till next time. See ya.